Thank you, gentlemen. Um, it's just easier to refer to you by your new name, Sabato? Yes. Right? Okay. You got Good for pizza slices. Huh? Right, exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're going right from here to there? Yeah. Great. Um, it's great to have you guys here. It's kind of an interesting meta moment where you will represent two enormously powerful and influential news organizations who are amassed about a mile from here as the president has made his first trip back to New York. Yeah. Um, and yet you also represent um, great history and narrative and storytelling, documentary uh, creators. Tell us a little bit about, Seb, we'll start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit about how one influences the other inside the New York Times. Yeah, I mean, we, we four years ago started T-Brand Studio just with the mission of kind of transitioning our media business to function more like a creative business. And the idea was that brands more and more were approaching us like we were an agency of sorts and far less kind of sending us those transactional RFPs saying, hey, you know, I want a 52-page newspaper schedule and a bunch of homepage sponsorships, which, by the way, is a great business. And if there's any buyers in this room, <laughs> I encourage you to do that more and more. Um, so we, you know, fast forward a few years, we have a 150-person creative team across four continents. We've acquired two agencies over the last year. And that transformation that we kind of planned for has absolutely happened. Um, the RFP era is kind of gone. Um, thinking about how we work with the newsroom, it's all about getting inspiration. So the newsroom decides they want to go all in on AR, all in on VR, all in on interactive storytelling. We immediately take the production capabilities and pull them into T-Brand Studio. And as brands are acting like publishers and they want to create their own context, we feel like this stuff is more powerful than ever. Mm. And in your case? Yeah, I mean, we are certainly inspired. We, we like to draft off the, the sort of the journalistic pedigree of yeah. CNN. Um, I have uh, taken a slightly different tack. We have um, really built out a, a self-sufficient studio down at uh, Union Square, mm -hmm. 12,000 square feet. Uh, and we've gone, we've gone all in on uh, full-time staff. So I have Emmy and Murrow winning directors, cinematographers, uh, designers, web developers, everything that we need to produce really high caliber polished video for brands. The idea being the same caliber of people that you'd find in the newsroom, mm -hmm. we have working for you in a very dedicated uh, and focused way uh, on the brand side. But you're keeping, there's a separation, right? You are yeah. you're physically separated. Total, yeah. total separation. Yeah. Yeah. But I did and point out that our newsroom just hired someone from Otto's team three yeah, years ago. Yeah, it's been going back with So our Snapchat editor was his head of video. That's right, um, yeah. We, uh, you, and I think you're seeing that a lot more, that openness um, for people to cross the Rubicon, mm -hmm. you know, for, for folks to, um, like I say, I mean, I, you know, one of my directs is 17 Emmys, you know, uh, for news gathering. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, uh, it's happening. And we're talking about that opening, there really is sort of a fluidity. And I know Meredith talked the other day about you guys becoming more of a full service creative capability. Talk more about how you see that evolving. So we'll start with you. Um, full service. I have to be careful with those words. <laughs> full service. Um, I think we're just planning for, in our eyes, an inevitable outcome where brands for the last year, as this whole kind of custom publishing world has really evolved, have been putting a lot of resources into this work that have been specifically for a certain publisher. So a brand you know, will work with 10 different publishers on a media plan, and then each publisher, they're gonna do a lot of high-end work that takes a lot of time and a lot of money. Right. Our thesis is that at some point, they're gonna wanna consolidate that and get more value out of the production work. So we need to have the capabilities that can launch work on the Times, but launch work everywhere else as well. So that's why we acquired the agencies, and you know, we're experimenting with other stuff like um, embedding journalists uh, from our team with brands. So oh, right cool. now, so right now we have uh, a tech editor who's embedded in a tech company, helping them staff out their newsroom. We're in a beauty company, a retailer. Just thinking about, you know, we are known for journalistic creds. What's that value to a marketer? And I would say that's when we start to kind of branch out of media into this more full-service world. That's really cool. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not looking to get into the agency business. I mean. When I work with your guys, they they move in. You know, they they come by and we work together through pre-production, through post. Um, you know, and they're right there in the edit room with us, making sure that we're that we're hitting the right uh, objectives and and making sure that we you know we're satisfying your clients. Uh, you know, I think I think what we what has happened though is is more of a, a commoditization of ideas. Yeah. So it becomes this old adage about good ideas coming from anywhere. 
that's what you're seeing much more of, I think. You, you know, the, that, a, that an idea can come out of a studio like mine and then plug into a larger brand play um, that, that you have architected over at Digitas, for example. Well, you were saying, for example, earlier, like some work's coming from RFPs, but give us the ideal way to start a project, you know, best case, over a conversation, sure. yeah. perfect brief, et cetera. I mean, <laughs> some lovely examples. Uh, it, 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 it certainly helps to have the client involved, and I understand there are sensitivities there, and not every agency wants to introduce us to clients. But it, it, when it happens, it works well, to the benefit of all, I think. Um, we had a great one last year, um, which started as a conversation about a homepage takeover, about banners and buttons. The future. And <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and it evolved into um, the world's first summit on human augmentation, on cyber, cyborg oh. culture. Cool. Um, you know, broadcast on Twitch, we turned it into a half hour doc on Amazon. Um, it just went everywhere. You know, that idea of sort of video going everywhere. And using things like events as great engines for creating mm -hmm. content as well. So I like to think, a, 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 I'm very grateful to Seb and, and what he's done with the, um, with the paid posts, yep. you know, because I think that, that normalized native advertising for a lot of folks. Where I'm looking to go, because I've, I've, I've got 52 points of distribution, literally TV channels, an airport network, a huge dot com, mm -hmm. the most followed social handle in news. So all of those toys mean that I can play with formats. So half hour docs, TV series, um, uh, events, uh, you know, whatev whatever it takes to meet objectives. We can we can drum up the right format for that for that cool. end. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So the I, I think, I'm watching it now. I'm really interested in killing this idea of the big reveal. Okay. You know the <laughs> the kind of ta-da. Here's the deck. We just spent three weeks working on it. And I have yeah. no idea if it's the right fit for your brand. Sure. I think publishers are so used to working in that model where agencies bring in the kind of cattle call. They say, hey, you know, we're going to pick one of you. We're going to put the yeah. kind of IO out there. We go on them all the time. You're know, <laughs> going to knock Otto out before he tries to reach for it. Uh, <laughs> so the, what we're doing more and more, and I really like this model, is we bring the agencies in, um, yeah. and we work with them mostly to write the first 15 pages of the deck. And the strategy, why this fits for the brand, why the New York Times is right for you, and then we kind of present the raw assets for them to play with. And I think that's a really interesting model. It's worked really well. Um, it's hard because it takes a lot of time. Yep. You know, you don't get to, you can't yep. churn an RFP out in a week. It might take six weeks, it might take a couple months, but in the end, I think the product is much better. And so give us one really good example of where your work has influenced the newsroom in your organizations. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Um, sure, uh, I got a good one. So AR, um, there's a lot of talk about AR right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say for any brand looking to get into AR, um, it is a premature space. The distribution yeah. outlet is not there. It is for creative innovation and for kind of big PR worthy stunt work. Um, it's coming, but right now it is for stunt work. Um, so the newsroom knows it's an interesting format, but is not ready to go all in. We are on the brand side, because I think we can do some really interesting kind yep. of PR worthy work. So we brought in uh, IBM last year and built an app for them uh, mm -hmm. called T-Brand AR. We launched a campaign around the movie Hidden Figures. Um, the newsroom has taken a look at that and said, wow, this is some really interesting work. And now I can tell you there are some plans to get into the AR space, hopefully by the end of the year, um, if not early next year. And that will create a lot of buzz. Yeah, uh, cool. VR for me yeah. uh, as well. We, I, I was getting very tired of people talking about VR, so we went out and made some. I did some aerial virtual reality uh, for, for Warner Brothers, for Sully, um, and went very well and, and got a call from the tech side of the newsroom saying, how did you do that? And, um, and what they ended up doing, to their credit, is they ended up hard coding the VR player, set up a whole VR unit, and hard coded the VR player into the CNN app. So overnight, Three weeks ago, we became the third biggest distributor of virtual reality Very in cool. the world. Okay. Are we number one? Uh, oh, here we go. Little company called Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and then YouTube. Oh. But I'm sure the, the times will come back. <laughs> wow, so generous. Uh, so the original uh, founders of the New York Times, the Salzburger, o yep. Ox family, probably wouldn't recognize it right now. Um, Ted Turner, for whom Courageous 
studio is named for yeah. his uh, victory in the America's Cup 40 years ago. Yep, yep. Probably wouldn't recognize the studio yeah, um, yeah. On, in Union Square. Okay, so in five years, sure. prediction time, guys, what will your staff, not, what will all of us not recognize about the way you're doing what you're doing? You take that one first. So I have time to get a good <laughs> uh, I'm firmly going to be in the IP business by that stage. Okay. That's, that's where I see the future going. Yeah. Um, and, and, and again, formats. Okay. So if I've got 52 points of distribution to play with, I want to be creating brand-friendly IP and, uh, and building out that business. Cool. Yeah. For the New York Times, I think I would love to see us um, get into the entertainment space. I think it's the last frontier for the Times. Mm. We've, we've, we have a features business that has a long heritage in print, but I think the next evolution is how we can compete in that space. And then for um, T Brand, it's very similar. I think we want to get into the business of launching kind of original content that has its own audience and that we can program marketers into. Great. Well, nice to have news organizations making news. That's it. Thank you very Thanks, much. Sir. Really appreciate it. Sabato. <laughs> <laughs>